Oh my goodness. So upset when he told me he wasn't gonna come home. So we are about to head off to our chiropractor appointment this morning. I put him in a newborn onesie because I'm so sick of the preemie clothes that he's been wearing because we only have like five preemie outfits that fit him and I'm just so sick of those outfits. So I put him in a newborn one and it's so gigantic on him. But I think he looks pretty cute, huh? He look pretty cute. So Israel and I just got home from our chiropractor appointment, but we did make a stop at our PO box really quickly because one of our subscribers who is more than a subscriber, she's like my mommy friend that I DM constantly all day long. She sent us a little package because her baby was wearing premium clothes for probably about a week and she grew out of them and she knows that Israel is still tiny and he needs to wear premium clothes. So she sent me one of her baby's old premium clothes that she only got to wear for a little bit. I'm super excited. Cute. Okay, so she sent us two little hats super cute and then this kimono onesie oh my gosh so cute so i'm pretty sure i've already given savannah a shout out before but savannah shout out to you you're awesome thank you so much for sending us these preemie clothes i can't wait for israel to wake up so i can go ahead and put him in his new little kimono just look at how sweet this little boy is Oh my goodness. How are you so cute? Oh, hi, little one. So last night was Israel and I's first night completely alone because oftentimes Aiden travels for work. And when he travels, that usually means that he has to stay at the site that he's at and finish the job. Sometimes it's a two day job and he stays at a hotel and doesn't come home. And I was so upset when he told me he wasn't gonna come home. I just get sad at nighttime i feel like postpartum is crazy because during the day and in the morning like emotionally i feel great but by the end of the day maybe it's just because i'm so drained and tired and exhausted but my emotions are like not good at night and on top of that we have the outlet sock aiden's mom bought it for us and so he wears his outlet sock every single night and of course last night the app has difficulties and i was freaking out because i was like now i'm not gonna be able to sleep because his outlet sock isn't working texting aiden freaking out trying everything i could to get it to work and then this morning i wake up and i check the outlet app and it says that they were having difficulties and i was like of of course, the night that Aiden is gone, the outlet sock isn't working. Everything was fine though. Israel's night was great. He has been sleeping really good. He sleeps for about four hour stretches. So he only woke up twice last night, which is his usual waking ups. But it was definitely hard before I was going to bed, but it ended up being a really good night. All right, y'all. I don't know if any of you guys sleep with a fan in your room, but we do, and I recently broke. I went out and bought a new one, of course, because once you sleep with something in your room like that, with like white noise, hard to sleep without it. So when I bought a new one, and I bought just like your regular run-of-the-mill like oscillating fan that kind of turns it back and forth, but it was really quiet, and ours last one was like a good amount of loudness. Our last one had like a remote and had like touch controls, so you have like a couple of buttons here on the, on the fan stand, and what I did was I took the small motor 
out of the new one we got because it was quiet and not turning that fan fast enough. And the controller off of it, like the usual controller, you got the little twist dial and the pop up and down for oscillation. And I took the old motor and cut the wires and wired everything together, put the new con put the new controller on the old motor, put the stand on the old motor, and now it works great. I feel proud of myself because I did less than I do at work because my work's a little more complicated than I do what I just did, but it's just kind of cool. I'll show you. Because like I had to change out the, the housing and everything. I had to drill a hole in the other one because the other housing only had the single hole for the oscillation. I just, I had to do a whole lot. We haven't been doing much this weekend. Kind of laying low. I worked a lot on Thursday. I left at 5 a.m. on Thursday morning. Got home at like 8, 30, 8.45ish on Friday evening. So I was gone for two days. I'll show you guys what I did here. Like here, I had to cut this so you can actually see that I didn't clean it up perfectly. But it looks as it should. I got dinner in the oven, making sweet potato fries and chicken, both in the oven. Uh, pretty easy. Trader Joe's has sweet potato fries, uh, which we were trying for the first time. Usually we cut them up ourselves, season ourselves. So we will see how these are. And then chicken. Uh, I've been doing chicken a lot in the oven, just 425 for 25 minutes. Comes out perfect, nice and juicy, cooked all the way through. And there's no dishes other than just the pan that you cook it in, the, the cookie sheet. So I told everyone what we were making, and just a little chicken and some fries from Trader Joe's. So tell us how the fries are, sweetie. <laughs> They're good. I love sweet potato fries. They're my favorite. I prefer them over regular fries. <laughs> Ours are pretty good. Seasoned with like rosemary and sea salt. These ones are just crispier because I think they're in a batter. They definitely have a batter and they're fried before they are put in the bag. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of people commenting on our last videos, just a bunch of our videos, asking me to go over my birth plan and kind of talk about what I was able to do if I followed it if I didn't what they allowed me to do and what they didn't allow me to do so I have my birth plan right here and I'm just gonna go over it and talk about what I was able to do and what I wasn't and just how things went because I know that sometimes birth plans can be kind of controversial and people don't think that birth plans are worth it or you shouldn't have a birth plan because things are always up in the air but yeah so I'm just gonna go over my birth plan with you guys really quickly so this is just the labor part of the birth plan so my first thing I said unless otherwise requests are needed I would like my playlist of music playing and low lighting in the birth room. So since I was laboring throughout the night, there was barely any lights on. I only had like the light by the door on at all times. So there was a tiny bit of light in the room, but not much. And I personally just never felt like I wanted music. So I didn't turn my music on. And then next, I said, I would like my labor to be active, moving and changing positions as long as medically safe and comfortable for me. And I did just that. Um, they gave me a birth ball, a birthing ball, and I bounced on that for a little bit. I was able to get up and walk around. Um, even though I had IVs and so many things hooked up to me, I was still able to get up and move and they were very um, supportive in that. Anytime I wanted to get up, they were very helpful. They also gave me walking monitors. So I had a monitor around my belly that monitored contractions and then the other one to monitor Israel's heart rate and so when I wanted to get up and move around they got me the moving walking waterproof monitor so I was able to do that and then I wrote tub accessibility if possible and I definitely got in the tub for about an hour and again they let me wear the waterproof monitor so that I was able to get in the tub and labor in the tub the next thing that i wrote was no iv inserted um until medically needed now i was induced so unfortunately i had to be hooked up to an iv no matter what so i had to get a full bag of fluids before they started me on pitocin and then of course pitocin needs to be through an iv so unfortunately i did have to be hooked up to ivs but that's just how birth goes and if i wasn't induced then i would definitely prefer not to have ivs because it is absolutely awful being hooked up to ivs you just have all of these cords everywhere you can barely use like you can't use the arm that has the ivs in it and it was just it was a pain it really was a pain being hooked up but I was induced so I had to be. And then I wrote down regarding an episiotomy, 
basically i don't want one and i asked for guidance on when to push when to stop basically i wanted to try to avoid an episiotomy and try to avoid tearing if at all possible i was not given an episiotomy and also um my doctor was amazing with telling me when to push and when to stop she was also amazing at basically stretching me out while I was pushing. So I did tear naturally, but I barely tore. I only had like three stitches or so, so that went really well. Another thing I wrote on here was, unless medically required or necessary, as minimal fetal monitoring as possible and no internal monitoring. So since I was induced because of his size, he did have a monitor on him on my belly at all times but that was just to track his heart rate to make sure that he was doing well with the pitocin and all of that so i did have to have fetal monitoring but i never had internal monitoring which was amazing because i did not want internal monitoring at all if i were to go into labor naturally and not have to be induced i probably wouldn't want to have fetal monitoring because that's just another set of cords and annoyingness that was all over my body like I had two IVs in my arm, one for liquids, one for Pitocin, and so I was hooked up to that and I had the pole, the IV pole. And then I had to have a blood pressure thing on my arm at all times. I couldn't take it off. It was going off every 30 minutes to an hour depending on what they had it set on. And then I had the belly monitors, so the contraction monitors and the heartbeat monitor so i was literally hooked up to so many different things and it was really annoying but that's what had to happen because i was being induced and then as far as the baby goes i said unless there's an emergency i'd like the baby to come directly to me after birth for skin to skin and try to breastfeed and medical exams can happen after bonding and then after that i also said after the baby is born please wait to clamp the cord until it's done pulsing i wanted delayed cord clamping and i also wrote that i did not want the baby to get a bath in the hospital because i wanted the vernix to sink into his skin so all of those things that i wrote down in my birth plan regarding israel were actually their procedure at the hospital so i was talking to my nurses and my doctor and they asked me you know what my birth plan was and what, what i wanted out of the birth experience and all of those things they said are standard procedure at the hospital that i gave birth at so he came straight to my chest they didn't weigh him for about an hour and a half they let me have my time with him he started to breastfeed right away he had delayed cord clamping all of that so it was nice to know that even if i didn't ask for those things those things would have happened because they were just regular protocol at the hospital that i delivered at i would say that most of the things that i had here on my birth plan happened just the things that didn't happen were because i was being medically induced so there we go there's my birth plan and there's what happened and what didn't happen we're headed to church for the first time ever with israel so we will see how that goes i'm excited to see how he does his first time at church that's going through they're pursuing accredited degrees associates bachelor's degrees we even have a student pursuing her master's, her master's degree and none of that could have happened without your generosity and all we just ran into target really quickly because they're having a baby sale right now really good deals i wish that we would have gone to the better target because the one in the valley sucks but i think it's september 1st through the 14th that they're having this sale so maybe i'll run to the nicer target sometime this week that has a lot more stuff and just a lot better stuff i had been nursing like this whole entire time either without a boppy and just like rolling up blankets or i have this one boppy that's like super tiny like it's just so tiny and i went over to my friend mariah's house last week and she had a regular size boppy and I needed to feed of course so I used her boppy and I was like oh my gosh I need a regular sized boppy like this is a game changer so we got a regular big sized boppy with a cover on it well we bought a cover for it and I also got him some cute little pants because he doesn't really have that many pants so I think these were like seven dollars for all three of these cute pants from Cloud Island. Make sure that you guys go check out Target's baby sale. It's really, really good. So this is absolutely adorable. I'm making dinner and like half doing the dishes here. And I asked Corinne for some help and she was like, well, I can't really help you right now. 
and I look in his nursery, and this is what I see. We got Mr. Man up on the play pad from Grandma, wearing his cute fall onesie already, in this hat, <laughs> with this awesome wood toy. This is what I'm talking about. Wait, give him. Family. I peeked around the corner. What did you think I was doing? And that's what I saw. Right there. I thought that she was taking photos with the hat on. Tomorrow I will. Because the hat's adorable. Just look at how cute my baby. Hi, my love. He loves looking at the window that's right behind me that he's obviously staring into. Hi, my love. I went to the Better Target today to look at the sale stuff. Got him this cute little sleeper. Got a couple of other things too. But we didn't get to stay long because he got really grumpy and Pastel is making all that noise. It is shower day number two. Bath day, not shower. Sorry, I haven't said bath in like 20 years. We cleaned out the sink. Works perfect. Little man's getting bath. He's just eating on his hand. Mom was washing him. It is. About time to end the vlog. And it's getting late and Corinne's busy and I am not much help with what she's doing. It's kind of a two-handed one-man job. So I'm gonna get a shout out for you guys off of our last video, the two-week postpartum update. All right guys, so this week's shout out goes to Aubrey Marino. She has multiple comments on this last video here just going through. She has like two or three, I believe. Naked boy is done with his bath. But she is engaging. She said that she's so happy that we've had an easy time with our postpartum and that Corinne is doing amazing, which she is. <laughs> oh, look at the little man over there. Mom, I'm starving. It is also time for the verse of the vlog. This week's verse is Psalms 56.3 out of the New Living Translation. It says, but when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, which I feel is fitting for our current state in life. I'm not really afraid, but there's a lot going on in the Emmerich life right now, lots of changes. It was definitely a time in life where we just had to put our trust in God with everything, with jobs and finances and all that stuff. I don't know if you have anything going on this week. We are going down to see family this weekend. So we'll take you guys along for that. My grandparents get to meet their very first great grandbaby because I'm making them great grandparents. If you guys have any prayer requests, you can leave them down in the comments below. Or if it is too much to share in public, you can DM me or my wife on Instagram. We would love to share prayer with you and pray over you. It is something that both Corinne and I look forward to over the week. That is gonna be it for this week's vlog. Like always, you guys are loved and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.